one area of my recent research has been at the intersection of digital technologies, marketing and operations. Uh, a recent uh, work which I will talk about is on consumer pseudo showrooming and omnichannel retailing. In this work, uh, we looked at a phenomena which is occurring where pure online retailers like Warby Parker, Bonobos, Blue Nile, uh, they have started to move from online world into the physical world. That is, they started to set up shops in New York, New Jersey, Los Angeles, uh, where people can go to the shops, inspect the product, and then buy them online. Uh, similarly, a lot of offline stores like Macy's, Nordstrom, they have also started to go online and sell their products. So we found that this is an interesting phenomena and we try to understand why this phenomena is occurring. That is, uh, online stores who said they will never open a physical store are trying to open a physical store. Uh, from an operations perspective, it was very easy to figure out why this was going on because uh, they wanted to save on inventory costs, operating store costs and things of that sort. But we said there are other aspects which are interesting which could explain why this phenomena uh, of omnichannel retailing is occurring and we also wanted to see how firms can profit from this omnichannel retailing. And that's where we found a consumer behavior called pseudo showrooming. And this pseudo showrooming is something we define when a consumer looks at a product in the physical store and buys a related product from the same firm but online. This is in contrast to showrooming, where in showrooming a customer will look at a product in the offline store and go online and buy that product from a competitor. So pseudo showrooming is uh, quite different from simple showrooming. And that's a phenomena we identified and that to a large extent explains why firms are trying to have a, a physical store, someone like Bonobos or uh, Warby Parker. Because for product categories like apparel, accessories and others, consumers want to touch and feel the product. Now, that obviously cannot be done online unless they buy the product, it comes to their home, they look at it and that entails returning. Instead, if they go to the store, they can touch, feel the product. So now omnichannel retailers, what they're trying to do is they're trying to strategically decide which product they want to sell online, which product they want to sell offline and online. That is dual channel products as well as individual channel products. So the interesting thing with pseudo showrooming is it's a fit revelation mechanism. That is a customer goes to the physical store, looks at one product and tries to get a sense of what is the value of that product. But he also gets a sense of what is the value of another product which is related to this product but not available in the physical store. It is available only on the online store. So that is what is really the pseudo showrooming and that helps the consumer to mitigate the fit uncertainty which happens for products like apparel, accessories, and other kinds of product. And what we have done is we have taken that perspective and developed a stylized model where we evaluate using some game theoretic concepts of what is going on in this particular this thing. And we find that customer uh, firms have typically a product line. The product line consists of several products. They're all similar. Like say, if you take apparel, you could have five or 10 different uh, apparel, all designed by the same designer, using the same manufacturing process, using similar kinds of fabric. But the online retail, omnichannel retailer will sell two out of those five in the store, and the remaining three he will sell, or the remaining five uh, he will sell online. So a customer will go to the store, look at those two products. If he wants to buy them, he can try it and buy them there. But there is a third one, which is not available in the physical store, but available online. He's able to judge what is the fit of that. That is, he's able to infer in a pseudo way, what is the fit of that. And then he will go online and buy that product. And this kind of a pseudo mechanism really explains why Warby Parker wants to open a store in New York City where customers can go and inspect the 
eyeglasses, but when the time comes to buy, they buy online. Now, what is the reason? In the store, you may be able to provide 100 varieties of eye glasses, but online you can provide 100,000 varieties of online glasses and that's exactly what Blue Nile does is in their store in Garden City, New Jersey. They provide 300 different wedding rings people could buy, but the stone which goes into this thing, they can go online and they can pick from one out of the 200,000 stones available online. And that phenomena where the pseudo showrooming is occurring has been very beneficial for the Omni channel and that really explains why all the pure online retailers are really going after opening stores. And what we find is that by having this pseudo showrooming, the intention of the customers to buy gets enhanced because they are able to look at a product even though they are not thinking of buying the product, they are thinking of buying the related product because uncertainty in fit gets mitigated to a certain extent. So the remaining uncertainty, that is what propels them to go online and buy the thing. But the thing is that pseudo showrooming reduces that fit uncertainty quite drastically. So that helps uh, the omni-channel retailer. And what we are finding is some very interesting thing, omni-channel retailing where they sell some products online, some products on both online and offline is very beneficial in terms of profits for the omni-channel retailer. That is, they are able to make more profit than two individual sellers where one seller sells both the products, uh, sells the products on both channels and one sells only on the online channel. Now, this comes about because of the coordination which allows the omni-channel to do between which products they sell offline which products they sell online only and which products they can sell on both. So if you have a product line of 10 dis different types of evening wear, they can easily coordinate out of these 10, two of them will be sold both online and offline. Eight of them will be sold only online. And that's what phenomena you see in places like <coughs> JCPenney's, uh, Macy's, uh, J. Crew, all of these guys. And what we are finding is we are able to explain that these omnichannel retailers typically sell high quality products only online exclusive. Lower quality products they sell dual channel, that is both offline and online. Similarly, if you have products within the product line which have more demand, less demand, products which have high demand, they typically sell only online. The products which have less demand, they sell both offline and online. And we have also been able to find out that during with certain ranges of fit uncertainty, fit probability, and also the return cost, it is beneficial for the customer to have this kind of arrangement of omni-channel retailing. So it is a win-win kind of a situation where the firm makes more profit, the customer welfare is also increased. And more importantly, this analysis which we have performed in this paper helps the omni-channel retailer to decide how to allocate the products between these two channels. That is, if you have 20 different colors, which color apparel should be sold offline? Which color apparel should be sold online only? Similarly, styles. It helps them what styles to sell offline and online, what styles to sell only online. So for the omni-channel retailer who is operating both the channels, this study helps them identify this phenomena which consumers indulge in, that is the pseudo showrooming. And this phenomena is possible because of the digital technologies which we have today. That is, they can walk into a physical store with their smartphone, go online and check out what the products are while they are looking at the product available in the store. So you find that and when they are online, they can read the reviews of people who have given the reviews when they were in the store. So a lot of these digital technologies is enabling the integration of offline and online for uh, retailers and this paper talks about that and gives some very uh, concrete results and more importantly it explains why this phenomenon is occurring and that's precisely what business research is all about is that we try to explain the phenomena which is occurring out there in the business by using some rigorous analytical and empirical methodologies and thereby make a contribution to the literature and also to the, to the practice world where executives who are in the retailing world who are trying to move into the digital world can use some of this knowledge which we have created here in this research 
to design their strategies, their placement strategies for products, etc.